Portland, Maine is probably the best beer town in the entire United States and for good reason. Not too long ago, I spent a few days here visiting 10 of the best breweries in town and I wanted to share my experience and give a sample itinerary and rundown of what to expect if you come visiting Portland for the beer. This is by no means the only way or the ideal way to explore the city's brewery scene or an exhaustive list of breweries in town. Just showing up and searching Google for the best breweries in Portland is a quick path to information overload or decision fatigue. So my goal with this video is to give you a good starting point to help you get the vibe of each place and an idea of what beers each brewery is known for and what each does best. Portland holds the top spot in the nation for the highest number of breweries per capita. As of making this video, there are 25 breweries for only 70,000 people. Portland's really small size makes it a very walkable city, with most of these breweries actually all within reasonable walking distance from each other. It also has tremendous variety within its brewing scene, featuring some big names like Shipyard, Allagash, and Bissell Brothers, but also smaller distilleries, craft cideries, meaderies, wineries, kombucha, and gruit makers. All of these things work together well to make Portland such a great destination for lovers of all things fermented. At the end of this video, I will put together an ideal route to take to hit as many of these breweries as efficiently as possible, so be sure to stick around for that. Portland has its own airport, but is only two hours north of Boston, which is a lot cheaper to fly into. If you have the time, I highly recommend spending a day or two checking out either the Boston or Southern New Hampshire beer scene, either before or after your trip to Portland, but that's a topic for another video. Once you get to Portland, book a hotel in the Bayside neighborhood to get a central location that's walkable to most of the breweries in this video. I stayed at the Holiday Inn Portland by the Bay, so you can use that as a reference point. The closest brewery to the hotel is Stars and Stripes Brewing, which is only a three minute walk away. Here you will find a veteran owned and operated brewery that fully embraces that identity. Stars and Stripes has a full kitchen, good variety on tap, specifically a great platoon pale ale, and something you don't see all that often at craft breweries, the ability to order in pitchers. This is actually their second location. The main brewery is actually in Freeport, but that shouldn't prevent you from making a pit stop here. If you have time, which I didn't, unfortunately, try to make it the Shipyard Brewing, Oxbow Blending and Bottling, and Liquid Riot while you're still in this area, or hit them up later as they are relatively close to everything. From there, take a roughly 10 minute walk up to the East Bayside neighborhood and start working your way up Fox Street and Anderson Street. Over roughly a half mile stretch, you will find six breweries, a winery, a distillery, and a place specializing in gruits, ciders, meads, and kombucha. Start with Austin Street Brewing though. Their excellent building has tons of space, both indoors and outdoors, with very well executed styles on tap, mostly with a focus on hoppy beers with some stouts and wild fermentations mixed in. Try their Patina Pale Ale or Never Ender Double New England IPA. I ended up actually trying their Proximal Mixed Fermentation Saison and Island Pacer Session IPA and was very happy with both. As a bonus, I ran into John and Mike, the Brew Dudes at Austin Street. Uh, so that was pretty awesome. Be sure to check them out. They've been around a lot longer than I have and they make some fantastic content. From Austin Street, the next place to go is literally right next door, Rising Tide Brewing. Rising Tide actually had my favorite beers out of the entire trip. Simply perfectly executed styles ranging from Russian Imperial Stout to pre-prohibition lager to spontaneously fermented raspberry ale. Plenty of great IPAs, both West and East Coast style to work through as well, specifically the Main Island Trail Ale and Zephyr IPA. Be sure to order the Nikita Russian Imperial Stout and the Hestia Wild Ale as well. As a bonus, there's a full kitchen at Rising Tide as well. And I think it was actually potentially my favorite brewery of the entire trip. It was the perfect combination of outstanding beer with great variety, good food, easy location, and great vibes. From Rising Tide, continue north up Fox Street to Anderson Street. And if you want, you can check out Bellflower Brewing, which is down a side street, but I actually missed this one, unfortunately. Bellflower currently has an IPA of some form on nine of 14 taps. So if you are a hophead, be sure to put it on your list. My next stop though was Lone Pine. Lone Pine is pretty famous in the area and their flagship OJ Double New England IPA and other IPAs really do hit differently at the source. There are plenty of other things on tap but their IPAs are really well done and the tap room is absolutely plastered in stickers. It's a really interesting place to visit with a nice outdoor uh, beer garden as well. And check out whose sticker I found in the bathroom. 
Next up, I headed directly next door. Well, next door and behind the building, to Good Fire Brewing. I really like this place and it seemed like it was a bit overshadowed by Lone Pine and its backdoor entrance, but it may have just been the time of day and the construction nearby. If you do go to Lone Pine, be sure to make it behind the building to see Good Fire. It's definitely worth your time. Good Fire had a very colorful vibe and a good range of classic offerings on tap like porters, pilsners, pale ales, IPAs, and sours. Check out their Prime and Wave flagship IPAs. I enjoyed their Specs pale ale as well. Neither Lone Pine nor Good Fire have food though, so keep that in mind as you keep moving through the day. After Good Fire, be sure to hit up the nearby High Fidelity Nano Brewery and Urban Farm Fermentary as well. Unfortunately, I've passed over both of these during my trip. There is only one other neighborhood in Portland that has this level of density of breweries, and that is the Industrial Way Cluster of Breweries. Unfortunately, you'll probably want a car to get there if you're staying downtown as it's about five miles away, but once you get there, you will find six breweries all within a few minutes walk of each other. Start with the biggest and the most famous one, Allagash Brewing. Allagash is potentially the most famous brewery from Portland besides maybe Shipyard, but in my opinion, it has far higher quality beers and a phenomenal tasting room. Of course, many know Allagash for Allagash White, their Whip Beer, and their Curio Triple, but this Belgian-inspired brewery has plenty more to offer. Their sour and wild fermentation program is absolutely unparalleled in the region, and they have many hop forward offerings as well. While you're there, definitely take some time to enjoy their brewery only offerings as well, like this pale ale, and grab some bottles and merch to go. After Allagash, simply cross the street to go to Definitive Brewing Company. This unassuming building is much larger than it looks and contains an industrial tasting room with loads of hop heavy options as well as plenty others. If you get a chance, try their Conti Kolsch, which is served in authentic glassware and is truly fantastic. Definitive has a significant portion of their menu dedicated to high ABV IPAs, and it actually has one of the only triple IPAs I saw on my entire trip, so if that's your thing, be sure to order it the next time that you're there. After Definitive, head to the next building over and check out Battery Steel Brewing. This small location hits well above its weight, especially with their IPAs. They're well known for their Flume Double New England IPA, but here you can also find several variations on that flagship beer, which can be very interesting to try out. I had Flume Squared, which replaces some of the regular dry hops with cryo versions of the same ones, and it was outstanding. If your palate gets destroyed by all the hops, they also have several great lagers on tap. I had their Golden Path Bohemian Pills, along with a double IPA. While it looks dark and deserted inside, that's only because I was literally the first customer of the day, so don't be deceived by that. Next door is actually the main location for Austin Street Brewing, so if you didn't get a chance to go to their Fox Street location, this is just as good of an option. However, the next stop for me was actually on the opposite side of the building, at Foundation Brewing. Foundation was another one of my favorites from this trip. They have a small tasting room that flows directly into the brewery, but it is a bright and colorful spot and they have a massive tap list. Here I found an outstanding Czech dark lager on a side pole, which is always fun to see. They also had phenomenal variety with just as many lagers and multi ales as they did for trendy IPAs and sours. They also had one of the best non-alcoholic hazy IPAs I've ever tried to date. Non-alcoholic beers are definitely becoming more trendy, and they are very difficult to pull off without either being watery or overly sweet, so I was very impressed. Also, Foundation is the only brewery in the area that has an on-site full kitchen and pizzeria, so it is the ideal spot to grab a bite to eat while in this particular area. Unfortunately, Geary Brewing was not open while I was in the area, but that is the sixth and final brewery in this spot, and one of the oldest in the city. It is a place that should definitely be on the list, as it really started the wave of breweries opening up in Portland, so try to make it there if you can. The final spot that I went is a place that must not be missed while in Portland, Bissell Brothers. While it's a bit out of the way, and you'll probably need a ride to get there as well, it's worth the trip. This brewery's IPAs are on the level of Treehouse, Trillium, and The Alchemist, in my opinion. By way of being in the tasting room, you get the freshest possible IPAs and a nice discount to their four packs. The brewery is massive, and as you can see by the horizontal lagering tanks, they do more than just outstanding IPAs. While their menu is mostly IPAs and Imperial Stouts, they do have a few lagers and sours on offer. But even if you remotely enjoy hazy IPAs, this brewery really should be on your list. The Substance flagship Hazy IPA is simply one of the best I've ever had, especially when it's so fresh. 
double fisting that in their Swish double IPA made for a pretty good time at the brewery. They also have great food available on site as well. These 10 breweries alone made for a fantastic few days in Portland, but I still didn't even get to half of them. Obviously, I need to make another trip up there sometime to hit the others. Plain and simple though, it doesn't necessarily matter which breweries you make it to, they will all be excellent. The competition is simply too stiff in Portland to allow for subpar brewing. Regardless, if you have the time and the liver for it, I've put together a two-day brewery hopping itinerary that should get you through all of them. And here is the order. Day one's gonna focus on the breweries that are available in the Bayside area and mostly downtown. Start with Shipyard Brewing, then move to Oxbow Blending and Bottling. After that, hit up Newscapes Brewing, and then go over to Good Fire and Lone Pine. And then try for High Fidelity, go to Urban Farm to get some of those Gruitz Meads and Kombucha offerings, go to Bellflower for their IPAs, hit up Rising Tide, and finally ending at Austin Street. Day two is gonna take you a bit further out of the city, but will end back up in the city, so do take that into account when you're doing your planning. You're gonna start with Allagash Brewing, cross the street to go to Definitive, cross another street to go to Foundation, go behind the building for Battery Steel, then you'll head down the street to go to Geary if it's open, and then go from there to Bissell Brothers. Bissell Brothers is pretty close to Bunker Brewing, so you might as well hit that while you're there. Then head closer into the city to go to Banded Brewing and Batson River, which are right next to each other. Lastly, move back closer to the hotel to hit up Stars and Stripes, Liquid Riot, and then finally ending up at Gritty McDuff's Brew Pub. That's a nice little in the middle of the city dive bar-esque brew pub. And these are just the places within the city limits. There's still more outstanding breweries and brew pubs just outside the city, such as Four River Brewing, Foulmouth Brewing, Nonesuch River Brewing, the Sea Dog Portland Brew Pub, the Mast Landing South Portland Brew Pub, and the Sebago Scarborough Brew Pub. So do check those places out as well if you got the time. I really hope this helps you understand why Portland is such a great place to visit as a beer lover, and I hope it inspired you to go check it out sometime. If you guys enjoyed this kind of video, let me know if you'd like me to do more of these in the future with other various cities. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already, and comment down below with your thoughts. What are your favorite Portland breweries? If you haven't been, which ones do you want to go to first? If you want to support the channel, please check out the merch store, the channel memberships, the super thanks, or the Patreon, and check out the Amazon store in the description box as well. I really appreciate all the support. Thanks for watching everyone, and until the next one, cheers.